Before we start this week's weekly vlog, let's just very quickly take a look at last night as I went out to a Bournemouth Bloggers event uh, at Haskins Garden Centre in Ferndown. Uh, it was just a, it was an informal meet up really with the other bloggers just to see what they're up to. But let's take a look at this footage right now. Hello and welcome to weekly vlog number 24. This is the penultimate weekly vlog uh, before I take my week break. Honestly, I can't believe I've nearly done 25 weeks of non-stop vlogging. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Um, so, and that's technically half a year. That's half a year of my life vlogged and up on the internet, honestly. Uh, so, welcome along to weekly vlog number 24. Uh, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Steve. Uh, I do this YouTube uh, channel called Steve Official. And, of course... I do these weekly vlogs every week, um, so and apart from a couple of weeks' time when I take a week's break. Uh, but, but it is Saturday afternoon, I've just got home from work and I've just got out of my work uniform as well. Just cleaned out my chinchilla cage. Today is the Queen's official birthday, so happy birthday, Mom! Today is also World Gin Day as well. I don't know why, but there's this song by Annie Lennox called Walking on Broken Glass. Really good song. Awesome song. Right? And I was singing it, I was kind of like singing it in my mind today at work. But the reason, I, I don't know, I just kept going, rocking on, rocking on, rocking on, by Like that. And then there was another time where I was just going, walking on, walking on, walking on, by But that's not how the song goes. This is how the song goes. This is how the song goes. See, it goes walking on, walking on broken glass. So it's Saturday night. I've just shut my curtains and I'm just about to get myself into some pajamas and get myself to bed because I've got to be up at 5 a.m. in the morning because I'm working once again 7 till 1 tomorrow. So good night and I'll see you in the next scene, which will probably be Sunday. Welcome to Sunday. Not happy. Not happy. I'm going to give you guys a bit of an exclusive, to be honest. <laughs> um, basically. 
there's a dog. Basically, my mum's looking to get a new dog, and because, well, she enjoys the company of a dog. Uh, she's been enjoying the company of JJ for the last couple of weeks while he's been here, and she technically misses having a dog, so she wants a dog anyway. So basically, basically, I uh, last night um, gave my mum three hundred pounds because we're going to basically share this dog anyway. Uh, so she said that she was going to go out today and get this puppy anyway. Well, potentially get this puppy anyway. So I finish work. I finish work at two o'clock. So I come home. I think, oh yeah, you know, my mum might have gone and got this puppy. Turns out she didn't. Instead, she went out and brought a £20 stuffed dog and stuck it under a blanket and pretended that it was a real dog. And then I came home thinking it was a real dog. It wasn't a real dog. Got pranked, technically, by my whole family. It is even on video as well. The moment that I walked through the door and there was no dog. <laughs> Literally. Um, and... I actually thought that they were pulling my leg, but they're not. Um, <laughs> anyway, so there was some problems with the uh, with the seller and stuff, like well, in terms of like getting the dog anyway. So um, yeah, there was some issues there. So obviously, my mum didn't go out and get this dog anyway. It was a nice dog, don't get me wrong. Um, but she didn't go out and get this dog anyway. She's seen another dog now, so she might potentially be going out to this other place near Winchester to go and see this dog, hopefully next weekend. And I don't know, who knows, by the time I take my week break from my weekly vlog, we may or may not have another dog, or we might not have another dog for a few more weeks or for a, a couple of months or a couple of years, God knows when. Anyway, so I thought I'd just come on, just say hello, uh, welcome to Sunday. Got home from work. I. I did well. I was meant to do seven to one today at work, but obviously I did seven to two instead because I had to stay on and help out a little bit, which weren't too bad. Um, and then I came home and obviously that happened, which is weird. Um, so yeah, so it's not all too bad. I've got out my work uniform. I've been Snapchatting a couple of people, and I've also been drinking this uh, Tropicana Essentials drink, which I got reduced yesterday. For one pound fifty, bearing in mind it's still in date. It's on the nineteenth of June, so I don't know what's wrong with them. But either way, they were reduced in Asda, so I thought I'd pick one up and drink it, which I'm now doing. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so it's a bit of a weird day to be honest today, but there we go. So it is Sunday night and I'm just about to get my shoes on. I've just had my dinner for dinner tonight. I had a roast dinner. Uh, I'm just about to get my shoes on because I'm going out to the cinema with Mal to go and see X-Men Dark Phoenix. I will let you guys know uh, probably in Monday's part of the weekly vlog what uh, Dark Phoenix was like. But anyway, I'm just about to head out now to go and see X-Men Dark Phoenix with Mal at the cinema. Monday morning on ITV and we've got another fresh look for you this week with resident artist Rabia Chowdhury taking on the challenge. Now if you want to find out more and hear from the artist herself, all you need to do is search ITV Creates. Now though, at 6am it's time to catch up on all the latest news and entertainment and I'm pretty sure Piers will have plenty to say about his remarkable Michael Barrymore interview. All on Good Morning Britain. Davina McCall and Nikki Campbell are back to help more families reunite in the brand new series of Long Lost Family here on ITV tonight at 9. But now here to take us through to lunchtime, it's Philip and Holly with your Mondays this morning. Well, your lunchtime with us here on ITV continues now with some lively debates and plenty of Monday fun as we join the ladies live for Loose Women. So it's Monday afternoon, I have just uh, checked my Gmail messages and basically someone has liked my post on a website which was supposed to be a, well it was a, um, a social media um, website which really didn't take off. Well I don't think it really did take off. Uh, it's a social media website called Ello. Um, anyway. Now, basically, I signed up, believe it or not, four plus years ago. This was years ago. Um, I signed up to this um, to this website called Ello, which is, 
which was a social media website which, like I say, didn't really take off. Anyway, I posted something on there which said, Hello everybody, this is the official account for YouTube vlogger Steve Crosby, which is me. Anyway, that was four plus years ago. Someone, I got a, a notification saying that someone loved my post from th four years, well, four plus years ago. Seriously. And that's the only thing that I most likely had posted on this social media website, which didn't take off. How did they even find me? Hello, Chinny. Oh, hello. Oh, you want to come and say hello to the camera, do you? Come here, then. Come here, then. Don't bite me. Please don't bite me. Hello. You gonna say hello? Hello. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No need to get so angry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love how her ears went down as I just did this. Oh, that's a good girl. See? Oh, look at her ears. They're funny. This is my lunch today. I've got ham and cheese slices, which I picked up at work yesterday, but left it at work. This was meant to be my lunch from yesterday, but obviously because I left these in the fridge at work yesterday, obviously I couldn't have it. I've also got a Twix Extra, which I'm also going to have for lunch. And I'm also, I'm not going to have all five ring donuts, don't worry. But I'm also going to maybe just have the one donut for now. And maybe save the rest for later or something like that. And while I eat my lunch today, I'm also going to be catching up on EastEnders on BBC iPlayer. As I've not been watching EastEnders now for nearly a month. So I really need to catch up on that. <laughs> Just about to empty the dishwasher and refill the dishwasher once again with the stuff that's currently over there in the sink. Now that I've just cleaned out the dishwasher and refilled the dishwasher, I'm just about to tidy around my uh, chinchilla's cage because there's a bit of sawdust and a bit of their poo on the floor, so I'm going to clean that up now. Disney have released a new poster for Frozen 2, which is coming out in cinemas on, uh, well, in November 2019. Uh, and they have also revealed that a new, uh, new trailer will be out and will be available to view online and around the world from tomorrow. Hello and welcome to E3 2019. That's right, it is. The, uh, the gaming calendar's biggest gaming event of the year. Uh, so, of course, E3 2019 has kicked off and it has kicked off with Microsoft. Yes, the people behind Xbox have been on stage and they have announced some concrete information of some big games that are coming out this year. So, without further ado... Let's take a look, shall we, at some of those games and a lot more that was announced uh, during the Microsoft Xbox conference, uh, which took place overnight. So we're going to start off with the Outer Worlds release date, as it has been revealed. So the Outer Worlds, a sci-fi RPG uh, shooter from the makers of Fallout New Vegas, will be released on October 25th. Uh, for Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC. Um, so while developer Obsidian was acquired by Microsoft last year, The Outer Worlds predates uh, that deal and is published by 2K subsidiary Private Division. It has also been confirmed for Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, the news was announced at Microsoft's E3 briefing. Obsidian's latest uh, was revealed last year and we think it's uh, bringing the fun back to science fiction. So there we go. So The Outer Worlds, once again, will be released on uh, Xbox One, PS4 and PC on October 25th, 2019. Meanwhile, on uh, Microsoft's stage at E3 2019, it's been revealed Keanu Reeves is playing a character in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, so he will be cast as rocker Johnny Silverhand in the in the 
uh, game, the John Wick star appeared at the end of a trailer for the sci-fi RPG and made an appearance to reveal 2077's release date during Microsoft's E3 2019 press conference. Uh, as I said before, Reeves will be playing Johnny Silverhand, a rock star turned warrior who has appeared throughout the Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop rule books and adventures who CDPR says is one of the key characters in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Silverhand was also mentioned briefly in last year's gameplay demo for Cyberpunk 2077, though it's strongly implied that the rock legend has passed on, uh, which would fit in the canon of the existing Cyberpunk world, as Silverhand in the Tabletop Adventures at least was killed uh, during the fourth co uh, corporate war. Uh, the creator of the tabletop game, uh, Mike Pondsmith, recently went on record saying uh, that 2077 continues the timeline of 2020, so it's likely that Silverhand either faked his own death or wasn't as dead as we might have thought. Uh, it's also possible that Reeves Silverhand isn't the Johnny Silverhand though. There's a momentary flicker when his character appears in the trailer that suggests he's either a hologram or perhaps that he's been digitally inserted into V's HUD. Uh, Silverhand wouldn't be the first warrior to find their consciousness trapped in cyberspace. His ex-girlfriend, Alt, experienced the same fate back in 2020. However, he appears will assuredly learn more about his character's fate when the new edition of the tabletop RPG Cyberpunk Red launches later this year. So we're staying with Cyberpunk 2077 as the release date has been announced as I did reveal uh, before. Uh, so with the help of special guest Keanu Reeves, CD Projekt uh, Red has announced the release date for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, the reveal came at the end of a new trailer during Microsoft's E3 press conference and confirmed that Cyberpunk uh, 2077 will release on April 16th, 2020 for PS4, Xbox One, uh, which includes PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, and on PC. Matrix and John Wick star Keanu Reeves came on stage to reveal he is in the cast and to make this announcement as well. Uh, so there we go. So just a quick reminder that Cyberpunk 2077 will be, re uh, will be released on uh, Xbox One, PS4, PS4 Pro, Xbox One X and PC on April 16th, 2020. Gears 5 release date, Flying Drone Collector's Edition announced as well during E3 2019. So Microsoft's E3 2019 Xbox press briefing uh, the Collision announced that Gears 5 will be released on September 10th, 2019 uh, for the Xbox One, Xbox One X and PC. Uh, Microsoft also announced a Collector's Edition which will include a replica Jack drone from the game that actually flies. So Gears 5 release date, so the September 10th, 2019 release date uh, positions Gears 5, don't call it Gears of War 5, whatever you do, because it is called Gears 5, uh, as Xbox's uh, premium first party title uh, this holiday, and continues the, tradi the tradition of numbered Gears games releasing during the full season. Uh, Gears 5 Collector's Edition price and details. Uh, so over in America, the GameStop exclusive Jack Drone Collector's Edition will cost $260 and it will include flying replica of Jack as well as a remote controller. Premium collector's box, a custom display stand, exclusive in-game Jack skin, embroidered uh, DBI patch, a DBI collector's booklet, DBI ID badge with Gears 5 lanyard, a Jack schematic art print, uh, Alex Ross steelbook case, uh, so that is everything that you get in the Collector's Edition. So Gears 5 is released on Xbox One, Xbox One X and PC September 10th, 2019. Dragon Ball Project Z is called Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. That's been revealed at E3 2019. Uh, as it was previously called, Dragon Ball Project Z is now titled Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and will arrive in early 2020, revealed at Microsoft's E3 2019 Xbox conference. 
Uh, we got a good long look at the game in action with all uh, cell shaded battles and energy beams you'd expect from a Dragon Ball game. Uh, during the Dragon Ball Project Z unveiling back in January, uh, we learned the game will let players discover the story of the mysterious Dragon Balls and join Goku and fellow warriors in the never-ending search for the ultimate fight. Uh, the previously released uh, reveal trailer featured such characters as Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, uh, Vegeta, uh, Frieza and many more as iconic scenes and locations from Dragon Ball Z were showcased. Uh, so there we go. So that is uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Project Z, sorry, uh, it's called Dragon Ball Z Kakarot and will release in early 2020. Some major news coming from the Microsoft Xbox E3 2019 stage and Halo Infinite is an Xbox Project Scarlet launch title. Uh, Halo Infinite has been announced by Microsoft at its E3 2019 press conference as a launch title. Uh, for Xbox Project Scarlet, the next Xbox that will launch in holiday 2020. Uh, following Halo Infinite's reveal at last year's E3, Halo developer uh, 343 Industries revealed plenty of details about the upcoming game. It will have a full player split screen and no battle royale mode or loot boxes that cost real money. Uh, Bonnie Ross, head of 343 Industries, said the development team considers Halo Infinite a spiritual reboot. So we may know that Halo Infinite is one of the launch titles coming onto the next Xbox, but what is going to be the next Xbox which comes out next year? Well, we are about to find out. Uh, because the next generation Xbox has been announced at Microsoft's Xbox E3 briefing, currently called Project Scarlet. It will be released in holiday 2020, so around about the end of 2020. Uh, so a video explained uh, that from a processing standpoint, the console will be four times more powerful than the Xbox One X, capable of resolutions up to 8K, 120 frames per second, and ray tracing. The priority is apparently to reduce load times in games. Uh, Microsoft says that a new generation SSD drive is being used as virtual RAM, offering major performance increases over previous generations. Um, Phil Spencer said on stage, for us the console is vital to our experience uh, as he doubled down on Microsoft's recent games first philosophy with Xbox. Uh, hundreds of developers across first and third party studios working on the next gen games including the launch title as we just revealed which is Halo Infinite. Uh, originally rumoured under the same codename Scarlet, Microsoft had been teasing the console's reveal using hidden RGB codes. Dying Light 2 launch window has been announced at E3 2019. So Dying Light 2 is coming in the second quarter of 2020. The announcement came during the Microsoft E3 2019 Xbox conference. This is the first mention of a release window since the game was announced and narrows things down significantly, although we don't have a concrete Dying Light 2 release date just yet. Last week we were treated to art teasing a new Dying Light 2 UV light mechanic. The UV light in hurts and confuses the infected so it's used as a protective measure among the living. From software's George R. R. Martin came Elden Ring uh, officially revealed. Uh, so the Bloodborne and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice developer's new game has been revealed during the Microsoft Xbox E3 2019 press conference. From Software and Bandai Namco officially revealed Elden Ring. Uh, Martin previously stated he cons uh, consulted uh, on a video game out of Japan, which lined up with rumours that Martin had collaborated with uh, From Software on a new game. And the name and logo for Elden Ring leaked ahead of E3 2019, confirming Martin's work with From, so uh, from Software. Um, so yes, there we go. So that was everything announced during the Microsoft E3 2019 press conference. So let's take a look at Bethesda as they were next on stage for their E3 2019 conference. 
and we're going to start off with Fallout 76 Wastelanders DLC uh, as some details of that have been announced on stage during E3 2019. So during Bethesda's E3 2019 press conference we were shown footage from the upcoming free Wastelanders DLC for Fallout 76 and its new Battle Royale mode, Nuclear Winter. Bethesda is calling the Fallout 76 uh, biggest update yet as it will fundamentally change the game. The free update is part of its year two content and will feature human NPCs uh, with full dialogue trees and a new main quest choice and consequences, new weapons and gear and more. Wastelanders is set to arrive this autumn. Uh, Fallout 76 will have a free trial week starting today, Monday the 10th of June. Uh, Bethesda also announced the Nuclear Winter Battle Royale mode which has also been released uh, from today as well. Staying with Bethesda from E3 and Ghostwire Tokyo is the next game from the Evil Within developers. Uh, a new action thriller from uh, Shinji Mikami uh, is on its way. So Tango Gameworks founder Sh uh, Shinji Mikami uh, announced Ghostwire Tokyo, Tango Gameworks' next game during Bethesda's E3 2019 conference. Uh, Mikami described it as an action-adventure game in which you will fight paranormal enemies and rid the city of a supernatural evil. Uh, creative director at Tango Games works Ikumi uh, Nakamura uh, went into further detail people saying by saying people are vanishing in Tokyo you must find out why you will encounter conspiracies and the occult you have to explore the world face challenges Nakam uh, Nakamura uh, said the reveal trailer uh, shows off people disappearing in Tokyo as well as a potential protagonist with a bow and some otherworldly powers as well. Dishonored Studio Arcane Lion reveals Deathloop at E3 2019. Uh, so at the Bethesda E3 2019 conference, the developer behind the Dishonored series, Arcane Studios Lion, has revealed Deathloop, a first-person action game set in a time of madness. Uh, Deathloop transports players to the lawless island of Black Reef in an eternal struggle between two extraordinary assassins and features a mind-bending story with meticulously uh, designed levels. A feature for the Dishonored series has always been known and praised for. As with Dishonored, players will be able to tackle challenges in most ways they see fit and one of the main goals of Deathloop is to hunt down targets all over Black Reef to put an end to the cycle that appears to bring each assassin back to life after death. The female assassin's purpose is on the island uh, as she wants to protect the, uh, the cycle as for the male assassin he will do all that he can to ensure this cycle ends once and for all. The end of the trailer features a movie like credit shot and may reveal the names of the two assassins Colt the Captain and Juliana Jules Blake. Uh, it also mentions the Aeon program and other potential character names including Igor Serling, Harriet Morse, Dr. Wen uh, Dr. Benji uh, Evans, uh, Ramblin' Frank, Spi Frank Spicer, uh, Charlie Montague, Fia Zabrowska, I think that is, and uh, Alexis uh, the Wolf Dorsey. Uh, the trailer hints that Deathloop will feature both gun-based and power-based gameplay. A force push-like move is used as well as a blink-transport move into a wall run. Uh, Dishonored 2 Arcane's, uh, Arcane Lion's last game is an incredible achievement in the genre. Uh, with IGM reviewing it 9.3, they called it a remarkable experience that accommodates any type of chaos uh, you choose to throw at it and they even named the game one of the best games of 2016 so Dishonored, uh, Dishonored 2 standalone expansion Death of the Outsider also marked the end of Dishonored as we know it which goes some ways uh, towards expl explaining this move into the new universe Staying with Bethesda E3 2019 conference and Doom Eternal finally gets a release date and it also reveals multiplayer details. Uh, so Doom Eternal will be released on November 22nd this year 
and it's got a two-on-one multiplayer mode uh, announced at Bethesda's E3 2019 conference. Doom Eternal will take us to some interesting new places, including Heaven and the Doom Sentinel homeworld. Also announced was Battle Mode, a multiplayer mode that pits two demons against a single Doom Slayer. It's apparently strategic, competitive, and a ton of fun. A collector's edition was also revealed, including a wearable Doom Slayer helmet, alongside a year one pass featuring two story-based expansions, soundtracks, uh, lore books, a classic weapons uh, sound pack, uh, litho lithograph and more on the uh, one hand eternal looks like more of a of the goodness we got in doom 2016 but on the other the shotgun has a freaking grappling hook on it now uh, in terms of story uh, id has said we're not just making a doom game anymore we're building a doom universe uh, doom eternal will be on uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and as of last week, uh, we know it will be a part of the Google Stadia lineup as well. The last thing to be announced at Bethesda's E3 2019 conference was the Final Fantasy VII Remake release date, which was announced. Uh, the Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Remake will be released on March 3rd, 2020, during a Final Fantasy VII concert in LA. Square Enix showed a teaser trailer for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which announced... Uh, the release date of March 3rd next year at the end, confirming a PS4 exclusive release. Square asked fans to stay tuned for more during the Square Enix E3 2019 press conference. The trailer features footage from the Megar set portion of the game, predominantly of Avalanche's first Mako reactor bombing run. The Guard Scorpion battle is shown with Cloud using Cross Slash, Limit Break and Bar Barrett using Big Shot. We get a short look at the duo fighting uh, Shinra's various defence forces and it looks like the idiosyncratic uh, designs from the original are all present and correct as well. The trailer did not make it clear whether the release date will be for just the first episode of the game or if Square Enix has decided to release the remake in full rather than the previously announced episodic plan. Final Fantasy VII Remake was first revealed at E3 2015, but was re-revealed last month during a PlayStation State of Play livestream, boasting new character models, combat and more. The re-reveal uh, was likely down to the game shifting from an external developer to an in-house Square Enix team. Uh, that shift hasn't changed one of Remake's more controversial choices. Uh, this remains an episodic game, last that we heard. Square Enix also confirmed uh, that Kingdom Hearts 3's Remind DLC is set for a winter release as well. We've got loads more coverage of the E3 2019 event taking place over in the States later on in the weekly vlog as we've got some... Um, Ubisoft news to bring to you. We've also got Square Enix as well. Uh, and there's also going to be a PC gaming show and a KF Games showcase as well happening over there in the States. But I think we're going to be covering the Ubisoft and Square Enix events uh, during the E3 2019 event. Uh, that's happening a little bit later on in this weekly vlog. So stay tuned for more. Look at this. Time to get up. Lazy bastard, this is my alarm. Really? It's Tuesday morning, it's currently quarter past nine at the time of recording this, and I've just got up and just gotten out of my bed. Let's see what the weather's doing outside this morning. It's looking very damp but very cloudy at the same time. It's time for me to get out of my pyjamas now and time for me to get dressed. So I've just come downstairs and I'm just about to make myself a cup of tea. So I've just made myself a cup of tea but we have no sugar so I've just put my coat on and I'm just about to head over the road to the shop to go and get some sugar for my tea. Whilst I was over at the shop picking up some sugar for my cup of tea I also picked up some chocolatey square cereal which I'm going to have for breakfast this morning. Hello and welcome along to part two of E3 2019. Obviously, as you've already seen earlier in the vlog, uh, we covered uh, some 
things from Bethesda and Microsoft's E3 press conferences, which have already taken place over in the States. So let's take a look at some more of E3 2019 because more things have been announced uh, on the stage over in the States overnight. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's been announced once again. So we're going to start off with uh, Chivalry 2 as it's been announced for PC. Uh, so to uh, Torn Banner Studios has announced Chivalry uh, 2, a game all about bringing players into their favourite medieval movie battle scenes. Uh, Chivalry 2 will allow players to partake in all the greatest activities in medieval times including sieging castles, uh, raiding villages and um, burning peasants. Uh, the new game will feature first-person me uh, melee battles of up to 64 players and hope to recreate the experience and allow players to relive scenes like Game of Thrones Battle of the Bastards. Also, you can uh, now ride a horse, which is a first for the franchise. Uh, players will be able to fight multiple opponents at the same time and the goal of the team is to make combat very fluid and more risk accessible than its predecessor, uh, Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Speaking of which, 2014's Chiv uh, Chivalry uh, Medieval Warfare featured gameplay and combat similar to the Half-Life 2 mod, uh, Age of Chivalry. In, our, uh, in IGN's review, uh, they said, A few weak moments aside, medieval ultra-violence makes for great multiplayer chaos in Chivalry Medieval Warfare's gory brawls. Kill some Nazi zombies in Zombie Army 4 Dead War. Uh, Sniper Elite 4 developer Rebellion has announced Zombie Army 4 Dead War, a co-op game all about killing Nazi zombies for PS4, Xbox One and PC, and it is getting a release date of early 2020. So Zombie Army 4 features four-player dropout co-op that will take players to Italy and beyond. Oh, and one of those beyond locations is a zombie zoo. Uh, there are unlockable skills, attacks and upgrades that will allow you to improve your sniper character or one of three other non-sniper class, uh, classes. This new game also features Sniper Elite's X-Ray Cam that will follow the bullet as it enters your enemies in gruesome detail. Uh, Zombie Hitler's Horde has overrun Europe and it's up to you, the players, and your friends to put a stop to them all. Uh, Rebellion released the Zombie Army Trilogy in 2015 for PS4, Xbox One and PC that gathered the first three Sniper Elite Zombie spin-off games in one package. Uh, and of course Sniper Elite 4 was released in 2017 and IGN did review this and they said that the Sniper Elite 4 is a smart strategic shooter that empowers you to make your own path. So we're moving on to Ubisoft's E3 press conference now which has taken place overnight and first of all we're looking at Watch Dogs Legion Revealed and obviously the release date has been announced as well. Uh, so Watch Dogs Legion, the third game in Ubisoft's open world franchise has been revealed and it will be released on March 6th 2020. As previously rumoured the game has you playing a full gang of uh, DedSec Members and seed you gathering new recruits drawn from what would traditionally be open world NPCs. Every cinematic in the game will change depending on the characters you choose to play as from ex-MI5 spies to old ladies. Creative director Clint Hocking has acknowledged that the game takes place in a post-Brexit London in which the UK has become a surveillance state. A leak last week hinted that much of this was the case, but the sheer scale of that idea and the ambition on show is striking. The game's official name was confirmed by Ubisoft on Twitter shortly after the leak was revealed. Uh, Legion's London setting was actually hinted at in Watch Dogs 2. A post-release patch extended the game, uh, the game's ending, adding a set of co coordination. Uh, co coordinates uh, that pointed out the Brixton area in South London. Well played Ubisoft. 
The first details on Always Sunny Trio's uh, video game comedy series has been announced. So Mythic Quest Raven's uh, Banquet is the title of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia Trio Rob Mc. El Henny, uh, Megan Gans and Charlie Day's video game comedy series. Mug El Henny uh, announced at Ubisoft's E3 2019 press conference. Uh, the series follows a video game studio that's working on a game called Mythic Quest, one of the biggest MMORPGs of all time. As they work on releasing the game's first proper uh, first major expansion, Raven's Banquet. Uh, the trailer below uh, the trailer shows how McElhenney's character Ian Grimm uh, sort of tries to take his role as creative director very seriously in more of a goofy self-important way. Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet was created by McElhenney, uh, Day and Gans for Apple TV Plus in partnership with Ubisoft Film and Television and Lionsgate Television. Their comedy series was first revealed in August 2018. Rainbow Six Quarantine has been announced for early 2020. That's what Ubisoft announced during uh, its E3 2019 press conference. Rainbow Six Quarantine will be a three-player tactical co-op experience in which your squad faces off against an unknown deadly parasite developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Rainbow Six Quarantine will be a radically redesigned co-op experience. Uh, says lead game developer, uh, lead game designer, sorry, Jade Adam Granda, built on the foundation of Rainbow Six Siege. Gods and Monsters has been announced by Ubisoft. Ubisoft has announced Gods and Monsters, a new game inspired by the myths of ancient Greece, and it's coming on February 25th, 2020. A fancy open world adventure, it will feature combat with a variety of mythological mythological creatures as well as puzzle solving elements. Your actions are narrated by Homer, ancient Greece's most famous storyteller, not Homer Simpson from The Simpsons, uh, as he recounts your tale to his grandchildren. Uh, it will be released for Nintendo Switch, PC, Xbox One, PS4 and Google Stadia. Uh, per Ubisoft's description, in Gods and Monsters, players embody uh, Phoenix, uh, a forgotten hero on a quest to restore power to the Greek gods after it was stolen by Typhon, uh, the deadliest creature in Greek mythology. Players will explore the Isle of the Blessed and prove their heroism as they face dangerous mythological creatures, including fearsome gorgons and harpies and mighty cyclopes. Uh, gifted with special powers from the gods of Olympus, players must overcome treacherous dungeons, challenging trials and perform heroic feats on their journey to save the gods. Uh, we've seen the game in action and uh, you can check out the preview about why it's not just a Breath of the Wild uh, clone via IGN.com. Got a bit of a Netflix exclusive here at E3 as the Division movie is being made with Netflix. That's right, Ubisoft and Netflix are working together in harmony. Ubisoft has announced that the Division movie is starring Jake Glenhal and Jessica uh, Chastain is being made in partnership with Netflix. As reported by Variety, Netflix bought the distribution rights for the video game adaption of Tom Clancy's The Division, uh, which is being directed by Deadpool 2 and Hobson Shaw's David Leach. The story for this Division film will be much inspired by the game's fiction, with a description saying the story is set in the near future with a pandemic virus spread via paper money on Black Friday disseminate, uh, disseminate, decimating the city sorry, of New York and killing millions. By Christmas what's left of society has descended into chaos. A group of civilians trained to operate in catastrophic times are activated uh, in an attempt to save who and what remains. Leach previously spoke about how he really wants to break the video game curse with his adaption of the Division game, saying when a world is so compelling like the one in the Division, where people want to stay and take time to explore and play with these complex questions, but also be involved in hardcore action, uh, it seems like we can make it work. Also at Ubisoft's E3 2019 press conference, the Division 
2's year 1 expansion roadmap was detailed which includes a new raid uh, and will take players to the National Zoo, the Pentagon and Coney Island as well. Roller Champions is a free-to-play online roller derby game. Ubisoft has revealed Roller Champions, a new free-to-play online game that borrows heavily from Roller Derby during its E3 2019 press conference. Players can try their hands at the E3 demo from June the 10th to June 14th on PC over there in the States. Uh, matches are three versus three and require players to complete at least one lap around the track while maintaining possession of the ball before shooting into the goal. The first team to score five points wins. Otherwise, whoever has the most points at the end of the seven-minute match is declared the victor. In the event of a tie, the match goes to what's essentially golden goal, where the first team to score wins. When you don't have the ball, you can crash into opposing players to knock them down. Uh, this can be used to regain possession or protect your teammates. Roller Champions was one of the biggest rumours leading up to E3 2019 since the game was leaked by uh, Spiel Times two weeks ago, but today was the first time Ubisoft officially showed off the game on stage at E3 2019. This is one for Marvel fans out there, as Marvel's Avengers have been revealed with a release date. After two years of teases, we've finally seen Square Enix's version of Marvel's Avengers in action, and we have a release date as well, with the game being released on May 15th, 2020. Marvel's Avengers is an action adventure game for up to four players. The Marvel's Avengers Twitter said it will have an ever expanding universe with a customizable growing roster of heroes. Every new hero added will be free and there will be no loot boxes. Uh, the following heroes were shown in the reveal trailer. Uh, so we've got uh, Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Iron Man, Hulk, and Ant-Man. Uh, those who pre-order Marvel's Avengers on PS4 will get an early beta access at a date to be determined. There are plans to have additional benefits for PS4 players, but they were not detailed during the show. Marvel's Avengers will launch worldwide uh, on PS4, Xbox One, Google Stadia, and PC. Uh, we'll see more later this week, so of course uh, we will bring you a little bit more as soon as we bring it, as soon as we hear from it here on the vlog. Uh, developed by uh, Crystal Dynamics, creator of the Team Raider reboot series, and co-developed by Edios Montreal of the uh, two most recent Deus Ex uh, games, Avengers is billed as the beginning of a multi-game partnership between Marvel and Square Enix. Marvel's Avengers was originally teased under the name of the Avengers Project back in January 2017. Uh, we learned its true name in the run-up to E3. It's backed up by some serious development talent even beyond its two core studios after both Uncharted director Sean Eskag uh, and Dead Space producer Stephen Barry joined the project last year. Final Fantasy VIII Remastered has been announced for this year. Final Fantasy VIII will be released on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC. Square Enix has announced that Final Fantasy VIII Remastered will be headed to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC later this year. The trailer uh, finally confirms that the classic Final Fantasy game from 1999 will be making a return, joining Final Fantasy uh, VII, IX, X, X, my, uh, minus two and XII on today's current consoles. A few years ago, uh, IGM ranked all the Final Fantasy games, and even though Final Fantasy VIII only made it to number 11, they did say the breathtaking opening sequence, the failed assassination plot on Sorceress Edia, and the battle between the uh, Balam and Gal Galbadia Guardian, uh, Gardens are some of the most exciting and cinematic moments in all of Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII may be getting a remaster, but Final Fantasy VII is getting a full remake, and we got to see an extended gameplay demo that showed off early sections of the game during the conference. Uh, a boss fight and the long-awaited first reappearance of uh, Tafia uh, Lockhart as well. 
Uh, we also, at long last, got to see Marvel's Avengers in action with Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Iron Man and Black Widow taking centre stage with a late appearance by Ant-Man as well. Until Final Fantasy VII is released later this year, be sure to read uh, the IGN original review in which they said it may not exactly convert anyone who's never played an RPG before, but there's enough magic here to make any true believers uh, toes tingle. Um, and also as well, you can read on as to why uh, Final Fantasy VIII's train heist is its most underrated moment as well. All that and more via the IGN.com website. Outriders is a new co-op shooter from the Bulletstorm developer. People Can Fly takes off once more. People Can Fly, developer of Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment, has revealed Outriders, a 1-3 to three player drop-in, drop-out third-person shooter, and it will come to PC, PS4 and Xbox One in summer 2020. Revealed during Square Enix's E3 conference, Outriders will have players create their own character and set out across the ruined world of Enoch in search of the source of a mysterious signal. Along the way, you will presumably be doing a lot of shooting and you'll be able to do it entirely alone with up to two friends or a mixture of both. Don't expect Bulletstorm's whack, uh, wackier sensibilities, however, People Can Fly makes uh, clear that this is a dark and desperate sci-fi universe and the CG reveal trailer makes that clear. While no, while no direct, direct mention is made in the trailer or its accompanying dev diary video, Square Enix has confirmed uh, to IGN that this is a third person shooter. Uh, shots in the background of the diary suggest it will take a similar perspective to the Gears of War franchise. The final shot of the trailer, which seems uh, to show a character conjuring a fireball, also suggests Outriders may include some Destiny-style space magic amidst uh, all the gunplay. Outriders draws on all our experience from all our uh, previous titles, explains creative director Batoz uh, Kamita in the dev diary. We describe Outriders as a dark, modern shooter built with a tra uh, traditional values. By that, I mean we are creating an experience with a strong story that you can enjoy with your friends or on your own. Uh, the dev, uh, dev diary also shows off a selection of the game's weaponry, all of which looks unconventional. There are rifles covered in what looks like bone, not to mention guns that look as much organic as technological. Uh, so here's hoping... Uh, this is where Bulletstorm's influence comes in, allowing for some truly unusual gameplay. We've known a people, uh, we've known people can fly game would be coming uh, from Square Enix for some time, and even suspected that it was called Outriders as early as last year. However, Square Enix only confirmed the project last week. However, it seems we won't be hearing anything more for a little while. Square Enix makes uh, makes clear that more information on the game will only be arriving this winter. Uh, People Can Fly's previous work throws some hefty expectations for Outriders quality. The studio helped co-develop much of the Gears of War series, took full uh, development credit on the 9.2 rated Gears of War Judgment review and built a cult classic uh, in Bulletstorm, which uh, IGN called a violently charming popcorn shooter that plays well with some great design. Going back to Ubisoft's E3 2019 conference and Ghost Recon Breakpoint's beta is coming in September. Ghost Recon Breakpoint has a new trailer as well as a date for its upcoming beta which starts September 5th, 2019. Ubisoft's new subscription service Uplay Plus has been announced. Ubisoft's new subscription service Uplay Plus will give PC users access to Ubisoft's library of 100 plus games as well as DLC and other additional content for $14.99 over there in the States per month. It launches September 3rd and will be available on Google Stadia in 2020. Meanwhile, at Ubisoft's uh, E3 2019 conference, they announced, like they do every year, a brand new Just Dance game, which will be coming to Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and even the Nintendo Wii. This year marks their 10th anniversary and will include songs such as uh, Panic at the Disco with High Hopes and Ariana Grande's song God is a Woman that you can all get down to on the dance floor 
from later this year and it will obviously as well be available on Google Stadia when Google Stadia launches later in the year as well. So that is all for part two of E3 2019. We are going to have a little bit more a little bit later on in this weekly vlog, which includes that all-important Nintendo conference and Sony's E3. Oh no, Sony's not at E3, is it, this year? No. So it's just Nintendo. Nintendo's uh, uh, E3 2019 Direct Conference is set to be happening at some point later. So we'll be bringing you all the news from Nintendo uh, later on in this weekly vlog. It's currently 11.45 at the time of recording this, I've just gone upstairs, I've got myself ready for work as I'm about to leave for work now. I'm due to work today 1 till half past 9, so I'm just about to head off to work. Good morning and welcome to Wednesday, we're halfway through the week, which means we are halfway through the weekly vlog. It's Wednesday morning, it's just coming up to 8 o'clock at the time of recording this part of the weekly vlog and I have just woke up and got out of bed so let's just very quickly take a look at what's going on outside this morning because it's looking a little bit dry with obviously some cloud outside so that is the weather today although it's supposed to be raining so a little bit later on this morning um, anyway, so I'm just about to go and have a shower now and get dressed. Wednesday afternoon I've just finished seeing my support worker for four hours we went up to Costa Coffee for a uh, coffee and a little chat and a catch-up uh, and then we went shopping in Asda to get some burgers for lunch which I cooked for me and my sister and then we took JJ out for a walk around the backfield for uh, 20 minutes to half an hour the adventures continue on some brand new platforms, that's right, Spyro the Dragon has officially announced via his official Twitter account that Spyro Reignited Trilogy, which was released last year on Xbox One and PS4, is coming to Nintendo Switch and PC as well, so Spyro Reignited Trilogy will be available on Nintendo Switch and PC uh, coming on September 3rd, 2019. I'm going to bring you up to date with a little bit more news for you uh, because I'm just reading in our Bournemouth Daily Echo, which is our, um, our local newspaper. I'm just reading on the Daily Echo website very quickly. Um, so... I'm just going to read the article very quick. You know what it's like? You turn up at McDonald's for a muffin or hash brown, only to be told you can only order burgers and the rest of the normal menu. Uh, McDonald's has stopped serving breakfast at 10.30am for 25 years, but things could be about to change. Uh, it is uh, trialling a new system of extending the hours customers can order from the breakfast menu until 11am as reported 
in the Daily Mirror today. Unfortunately, the current trial is limited to a few outlets in Portsmouth and on the Isle of Wight. But if it is successful, though, the hours could be extended across the country. The move would also change the times. Customers are able to order on Uber Eats by half an hour. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is available to download and free to play this weekend from June 13th, which is tomorrow, till June 16th, which is this Sunday. Hello and welcome to the third and final part of the E3 2019 special uh, in this weekly vlog. Of course, we've been covering a lot of E3 2019 coverage in this weekly vlog. We've looked at Microsoft, we have looked at Bethesda, we've looked at Ubisoft, uh, we've looked at Square Enix, and now it is Nintendo's turn to take to the E3 2019 stage. Uh, obviously, they they didn't go on the uh, stage because obviously they done a pre-recorded Nintendo Direct which obviously has been played out for the uh, members of the press and the gaming fans out there um, so that they know what games are going to be coming out from the Nintendo onto Nintendo consoles uh, between now and the early part of next year so we're going to take a look at what was announced um, because there was so many surprises in store and uh, that was announced during the 45 minute Nintendo Direct that was played out to uh, members of the press and the gaming fans out there as well um, now this is one of the major surprises that Nintendo pulled out of their bag uh, during the E3 Direct and that is that a Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel is in development. Uh, the Direct announced that a full sequel uh, to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is currently in development. Uh, few details were revealed uh, during the Direct but the trailer so obviously we are still waiting uh, for a trailer for the Breath of the Wild sequel. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons has been delayed until 2020, so the big announcement came in the form of a release date for the much-anticipated next Animal Crossing game, New Horizons. Uh, Nintendo's Yoshiaki Hazumi announced a March 20th uh, 2020 release date, which marks a delay from the originally slated 2019 release window. Uh, while we'll have to wait a little longer for the game to be released, uh, the Direct did give us a good look at some gameplay. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC characters from Dragon Quest and Banjo-Kazooie uh, have been revealed. Not one, but two DLC characters packs uh, for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate were announced. Characters from the Dragon Quest series are joining the fight, uh, as well as classic Nintendo 64 icons Banjo and Kazooie. They were my childhood, seriously. Banjo and Kanzui, I love them. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remake release date has been revealed as well during the E3 Direct. Uh, the remake of The Legend of Zelda Link Awakenings will be uh, released on September 20th this year. Uh, it was also announced that the game will feature a neat dungeon builder tool that will allow you to create your own areas. Uh, Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition release date has been revealed. Uh, so Dragon Quest XI is coming to the Switch and there's not long to wait neither. The Definitive Edition of the acclaimed JRPG uh, will arrive on Nintendo Switch uh, on September 27th, 2019. Uh, Luigi Mansion 3 release date and Scarescraper has been revealed. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 has been revealed to be arriving later this year. And it features a return of the Scarescraper mode uh, from Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. It also features fully co-op and multiplayer modes as well. Uh, the Witcher 3 Complete Edition revealed for Nintendo Switch. Uh, so the, uh, the Witcher 3 is coming to Switch. Yes, CG Project Reds. Uh, Behemoth um, is coming to Nintendo's console, meaning you can finally explore Novigrad on the bus. 
uh, collection of mana and trials of mana have been announced. Uh, so a Western release for collection of mana is available for Switch today, uh, while uh, a full action RPG remake of uh, Second De uh, Detsetsu 3, uh, titled Trials of Mana, will arrive next year. Uh, no More Heroes 3 has also been announced during the E3 Direct. Uh, Travis Touchdown is returning in a full No More Heroes sequel, which will be released next year. Uh, Panzer Dragoon announced for a winter release. Nintendo announced that a new Panzer Dragoon game will be released this year uh, at the end of the year. Although it is not clear if the game is a new entry in the series or a remake. So, of course, more details on that will be revealed later in the year. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield will feature Pokeball Plus features. Uh, there was just a small amount of extra Pokemon news at the Direct, but it was revealed that the Pokeball Plus accessory, first release for Pokemon Let's Go, uh, will be supported by Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield as well. Uh, Candence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer release date has also been announced as well as it does come out this week uh, so there we go so that is everything uh, from that nintendo uh, e3 direct rounded up in the space of around about five minutes and 45 seconds anyway uh, so that is it for e3 2019 all the major uh, players microsoft square enix ubisoft nintendo they've all released details of upcoming and future games uh, that are set to come out between now and next Next year uh, so of course e3 uh, is still going on over in the states they have got some showrooms going on uh, they've got some demos for people out there to play and all of that and that is going to run between tomorrow and no i think it's still no it's on from now sorry so it is still running right now but it does it does come to an end tomorrow uh so there we go that is e3 2019 thank you all for watching um this part of the weekly vlog with the e3 2019 special uh of course there will be hopefully another e3 event happening next year so of course i will be back next year with more of e3 20 well e3 coverage E3 2020. Good morning. It's Thursday morning. I've just woke up and just gotten out of bed. The time at well, the time currently as I record this is twenty past nine. Uh, so let's just open my curtains and I will show you what's going on outside this morning because it's looking a little bit damp outside a little bit cloudy and there's also a bit of a breeze going on outside as well this morning uh so yeah so i'm just about to get dressed now uh, look who's on top of our shed it's our neighborly cat oh what's he looking at i wonder he's looking at something so later on tonight, I'm going out. Don't know whether or not you guys are going to see this, me being out later in the vlog. Who knows? Anyway, so I've just decided oh, I'm going to see if my work uniform can fit in my bag, which I normally take to work with me, which has got my work shoes in. Because obviously I, when I walk into work, I wear my trainers and then change over into my work shoes afterwards. Anyway, so I've just put my work uniform in my bag where my work shoes normally are and it all fits. Yay! Which is which I'm happy about because what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously wear something underneath my work uniform and then obviously when I finish work later tonight because I've worked today at four till half nine, um, obviously I'm going to take my work uniform off. And obviously I'll be wearing what I'm wearing tonight underneath my work uniform and then I'm just going to put my work uniform um, in my bag and then leave my bag at work because obviously I'm it doesn't matter because I'm back in I'm back in on saturday anyway saturday morning so i can always just get myself ready for work in my with my work uniform then anyway so i don't mind um but yeah so hopefully i don't know maybe you guys might see parts of me being out tonight in the weekly vlog who knows we'll find out very soon though Yesterday, I found out that it is exactly one whole year since Fortnite was announced for Nintendo Switch.
So I've just been downstairs and made myself a cup of tea, which obviously I brought back upstairs to my room. And I have also had my breakfast. For breakfast today I had a bowl of cereal, which was chocolatey squares, which is what I've been eating for the last couple of days. At p.m. Eastern tomorrow, I'm going to be doing an Instagram Live, just filling you in on some stuff and things. And, you know, I hope you're free tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Instagram. Don't worry, Swifty. I'll definitely be free at 5 p.m. Eastern. Don't you worry about that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the weekly vlog or not um, previously. But I'm going to mention it now. So about a week or two ago, I went to the cinema to go and see the film Ma. Um, and before the film started, there was this really weird Tango advert. Apparently Tango are wanting to kind of be back in the conversation again. So they, ha I think they've kind of got everyone talking. I feel as though, because I went to the cinema the other the other week, and there was an advert for Tango, and it's very cringeworthy, and it is on YouTube as well. So, you know what? Let me play you these two adverts from Tango, and let's just have a little bit of a dissectation of those adverts. Take a look at these. you but the first one wasn't really as cringy but the second one very cringy <laughs> very cringy really don't know really don't know what to think of that one. <laughs> oh dear but by the way that one that you literally just saw just now was the one that i saw in the cinemas the other day before um the film started showing um so <laughs> um yeah, so I hope those adverts are being played after the 9 o'clock watershed or something, because honestly, don't think they're ideal to be played during the day. I'm now watching season 5 of The Simpsons on my iPad, and while I do that, I'm going to have my panel raisins, which I brought yesterday while shopping, and I'm also going to have my cup of tea as well. So there we go. Perfect Thursday morning. Still watching The Simpsons on my iPad at the moment, but I'm just about to have some lunch. And for lunch today, I have got myself some uh, fruit pancakes and also a can of Monster Energy drink as well. So it's Thursday afternoon and I'm still watching The Simpsons. I'm just watching the last episode before I go off to work. I have got myself ready for work. I've got my coat on, my shoes on and all that. So I'm all ready to go to work. Just watching the last few minutes of this episode of The Simpsons and then I'm going. Uh, so I'm working today, like I said earlier in the vlog, 4pm till 9.30 today. Oh, and I've got a Snapchat as well. Facebook has just asked me this question at the top of my screen is... What the hell is Leia Leo? I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Leia Leo? Leia Leo? Is Leia Leo? <laughs> is Leia Leo your business? Um, anyway, and then it says, if this is your business, you can claim its Facebook page to help grow your business on Facebook. Now, do I say yes or do I say no? Hmm. Good morning and welcome to Friday. Friday's part of the weekly vlog with a very slightly hungover Steve. Hi, 
It's a little bit sore on the noggin this morning, okay? A little bit sore on the noggin. Uh, <laughs> so, it's Friday morning. I've just woke up. Um, and I'm just about to get out of bed. Here I am, I'm out of bed. Um, and I'm just about to open my curtain. So let's see what the weather is doing outside this morning. It is looking a little bit cloudy with a bit of wind. A little bit damp outside as well. So there we go, that is what the weather is looking like outside my window this morning um, I'm now just about to get myself dressed um, and start my day oh JJ's come to give me morning snuggles oh hello boy how are you this morning so it's Friday afternoon and I've just had some lunch for lunch today I had two chicken pies so you may remember earlier in the vlog I um, did a little video of Taylor Swift saying for everyone to go and check out her Instagram live later on during the day uh, because she just wanted to have a chat with some fans about stuff. Uh, well, it was revealed during her Instagram live that her brand new album, which I believe is her seventh album, uh, is going to be called Lover and is available to buy and stream uh, from August 23rd. So not long to go until we're able to finally get to listen to some more brand new material from Taylor Swift and of course her recent song Me uh, which features Panic at the Disco's uh, singer frontman Brendan Ury is obviously going to be one of the tracks that will be appearing on that album. Uh, apparently the album will be coming with 18 tracks so that's 18 brand new songs uh, songs that we're going to be getting to hear from Taylor Swift when her album gets released on August 23rd. You are able to pre-order uh, her brand new album right now. You know what, I've not even told you guys about last night yet, so I might as well tell you about last night. Well, I didn't vlog, as you know, uh, otherwise you would have seen some footage by now. Um, but last night was pretty good. I went to Slug and Lettuce in Bournemouth after finishing work at uh, half past nine. So I got to Slug and Lettuce in Bournemouth, the old Christchurch Road one, the one that's recently opened. Uh, I got there for around about ten past, quarter past ten last night. Anyway, got there, had a well, had a pint. Well, I had. A pint and a half of Heineken, uh, Heineken beer, which to be honest I've never really had before. I mean, you know, I've had like Carling, Carlsberg, um, you know, I've had beers like that, but I've never had Heineken before, so it was a little bit different. Anyway, I felt as though it was a little bit stronger as well, the alcohol in it was a little bit strong. Anyway, it was a really good night to be honest. Uh, we played a little virtual card game um, and basically it was sort of where people had to do things. So like for example, uh, we'd have like a glass, um, well basically we'd have, our, we'd have our drinks and for me example, I had to literally down like three, th three fingers worth of alcohol honestly and i i literally do i i, I hate god <laughs> i really do god cursed me with big fingers okay <laughs> big hands and big fingers um so yeah so obviously i had to do that not bad um and then yeah so it was a really good night, it was a really good night, and obviously I met some of Mal's friends as well, because that's, that's the reason why I went out, by the way, it was Mal's birthday, in case I didn't realise, in, in, in case I didn't say that already, it is Mal, it was Mal's birthday yesterday, so happy birthday for yesterday, Mal, if you're watching this, I don't know if you are, but uh, if you are, I hope you had an amazing birthday, um, and yeah, and it what it was absolutely it was incredible it was amazing amazing night um you know her friends seemed really really friendly and uh, really nice to talk to um you know they included me in their group again which was really really nice as well um yeah it was just it was just such a funny night to be honest it really was it really was a funny night um and then my snapchat played up as well i was going to film this moment where mal was drinking like all sorts of alcohol in this glass it had like well it had a bit of my heineken in it and then it had some vodka in it it had some uh, jaeger bomb i think in it i think it did 
it had lo it had loads of alcohol in it anyway and it looked pretty grim <laughs> i'm not joking it looked pretty grim i was gonna film it but then i couldn't because my snapchat messed up so which was a shame um but yeah so it was a really good night out really did enjoy it nearly threw up um ended up busting for a wee um later in the evening when literally as i was on my way home to the point where i ended up going for a wee out in the middle of a field um yes that did happen uh, so yeah so i really did enjoy last night it was such a good night so thank you mal for letting me uh come along and um enjoy your birthday with you i really did really did enjoy it um and yeah so that was the story from last night why do I feel as though Taylor Swift is hinting at something here? This is a new song from her, which is a lyric video on YouTube, which I've literally just found. It was uploaded 10 hours ago, and it says, You need to calm down. Alright, alright, I'll stop tweeting you, Taylor Swift, okay? If that's really what you want, I'll stop tweeting you. I'm just giving Taylor Swift's new song, You Need to Calm Down, a, a bit of a listen. Damn! <laughs> I like this. Oh, come on now. That was about me. Yeah, I'm fine. Is she, she needs to really breathe in between that bit. Oh man, I love this! Alright, I will. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll calm down. So earlier I went out and I bought this tropical juice from Lidl's and oh my god it tastes really really nice. So ever since me and uh, Mal have been come, have became friends, uh, we've, we've been gaming on Xbox uh, for a few nights, you know, during the, during the nights. Um, and obviously she's been playing a game called Tom Clancy's The Division 2. And I've been there playing games like Forza Motorsport because, well, I'm more of a, I'm more of a racing type gamer than a, than a shooter gamer, should I say. But anyway, to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie, she's kind of convinced me <laughs> to get The Division 2. It's just the way how thing, just the way how things, yeah, how she's said things about the game and stuff like that she's kind of convinced me to kind of buy tom clancy's the division 2 so right now on my xbox one i'm just going to show you the screen uh it is actually currently downloading tom clancy's the division 2 on xbox one it's currently on 18.20 gig out of 45.76 gig that's how big the storage is for the game um but yes i bought it because it is um well it's on sale at the moment through the xbox store thank you to e3 2019 so currently between now and monday the 17th of june uh the xbox store have got a sale on some major massive xbox one games tom clancy's division 2 was one of them uh, originally the price was 60 pounds but it's gone down to 38.99 saving me a 35 percent saving so i'm just going to mention something I have been talking to someone who I've met earlier this week online. Um, I'll mention her in the vlog, I might as well. Her name is Kaylee. Um, and we just seem to be, we seem to be talking a lot, a lot online. And, you know, she's making me laugh and I'm making her laugh. She's making me happy. I'm making her happy. Um, so, yeah, I I have a good feeling about this. Plus, as well, I'll tell you the other thing. She doesn't live far from here, neither. <laughs> she doesn't live far from Bournemouth, neither, which isn't too bad. So, I have a feeling that 
you know, the it the things might just be looking up for me. Um and by the way, can I just say very quickly hello to Kaylee, by the way, if she's watching this. Um I know that she's discovered my YouTube channel because I told her about it on Snapchat earlier. So she has been watching my YouTube vlogs. Um so yeah, I do have a really good feeling about this. Okay, and I am going to end the weekly vlog here. So, thank you all for watching my E3 2019 special weekly vlog. Uh, another weekly vlog is on the way next week. Don't forget that next week's weekly vlog uh, is going to be the last weekly vlog for a week. Uh, that's right, after 25 weeks of non-stop weekly vlogging, I have decided that I am going to be taking a break from doing the weekly vlogs. Uh, so of course I will be back um, on the first week of July I believe uh, that'll be that'll be when I'll be back with a brand new weekly vlog um, so please do join me for that and of course do join me for weekly vlog number 25 next week um, because well stuff might happen things might happen just you wait and see that's all I'm going to say. Uh, so yeah, that is all from me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. From me, it's goodbye. Thanks for watching. See you next week.